Now here we're going to talk about the safeties I've set up on this thing, the flame safety controls and the temperature controls. Now one of the first ones I wanted to show you was the pressure switch. Okay, I've set this pressure switch, remounted it here. It was mounted on the front panel before, uh, but most of that panel's gone. So I've remounted the pressure switch here. And I've got the tubing for the vacuum. This is going, this switch, when vacuum gets high enough, the switch will make. That goes up to the uh, inducer. And originally this switch had, had a tap on the back that was used. The tap is still there and it was connected to the combustion chamber. For this use, it really doesn't have any value. You wouldn't make it any safer. So what I've done is I've left that one open, but what I have done here, and this is something you need to do with this, here's a tap coming off of the gas valve, and it goes up to the combustion chamber. Now it's a little tough to see there, but look close, you can see it. When that tap comes up there, that's putting the gas valve in the same pressure area as the combustion chamber. And you do need that. That needs to be set up that way. So run a uh, pipe from here over to the combustion chamber and it should be fine. Now let's look at the other side of the pressure switch. Okay. Here's my tubing coming out of there. That's where most of my vacuum is coming that's telling the pressure switch that the inducer did come on. If I did not have a pressure switch in this system and the inducer failed to come on, then I'd have quite the, uh, quite the flames coming out every place. If you don't have a pressure switch on it, the integrated furnace control can tell you don't have a pressure switch on it and it won't start. Let's follow this tubing up to where it's tapped on to the inducer. Now you can see the tubing here. I've tapped it in to this little piece on the inducer that has the butterfly for the uh, combustion air. Okay, it's gonna have a high vacuum there, so that's gonna go down to one side of the pressure switch there. So when this thing starts off, the pressure switch is is going to make and it's going to say it's okay to start and it's going to start the hot surface igniter and the flame will come on the flame rod senses flame a couple other safeties i put on this thing we'll take a look at now here we're going to talk about how i've set up the rollout switch now the rollout switch is just a switch that's put on the combustion chamber and i'll i'll show you where it's where it originally was it's in there so that if for some reason the flame did not go into the heat exchanger, or in this case the forge, if it didn't move into that heat exchanger, then it would roll out into this combustion chamber and we need a, a high temperature limit to shut that off. And it's a manual reset high limit. Let's see if I can get close enough so you can see that thing. Okay, there it is right there pretty small. I've, there are no wires on it now because I'm not using it. It uh, was not effective where it was mounted originally on the furnace. It would kick off uh, as a nuisance trip because this, this combustion chamber does get pretty hot. Remember, we're running 2400 degrees for the flame in this thing, so it's pretty toasty. And I'll show you where I've mounted it uh, so it'll work more effectively and I've used a different switch too. Okay, this safety here, that's the two wires that came off of that uh, limit that was underneath, I have mounted up here. Now there was a second limit in series with this, and it was a uh, man or an automatic reset uh, airflow limit. I have eliminated it completely because we don't use it on this, so I've just taken it completely out and the wire, it was in series with these wires here, so it's gone. This one here is a 350 degree limit, and it's manual reset also. So if the temperature around this limit on the top of this box gets up to 350 degrees, 
I don't want it that hot. So I'm going to shut this thing down. I mean, this thing does run outside of the normal parameters for a, a furnace because it's supposed to make things really hot. And that safety will protect this thing from damage if it gets too hot. Okay, here on the top, I have mounted another safety device here. And it, well, what happens when this thing runs, of course, this thing is really hot. The, the forge itself is right there. So this is going to get very, very hot. And when it's running, there's air moving through underneath here all the time, and that's keeping it cool uh, from the inducer. But when I shut it off, this stuff is going to hold heat for a long time. And so what I've done, I've actually taken a water heater thermostat. That's a single pole double throw thermostat that's usually located on the top element of a water heater this switch is an alternative way of turning on the inducer fan so that if it's above 110 degrees here this fan the fan will go on even if the burner's off and when it gets below 110 degrees it'll shut off it's just a little safety I put on there and I thought it was a good idea and I've covered it with a box because this is 120 volts in here and I really don't want to get shocked off of it. So I've, I've covered it off. I've kind of insulated it from uh, the uh, forge to keep its temperature reasonable. But it's mounted actually on this metal plate underneath here. So that's another safety I put on it. And that's it on that one.